would like to walk through the book of Matthew Gospel chapter 5 6 and 7 Every words of the Lord Jesus Christ is more precious to the professing Christians But why the sermon on the mount is so significant compared to all the literatures in this world Even the greatest of the world's moral and the philosophical statement blush and stammer in the presence of this legendary sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ on the mount By the time the Lord Jesus Christ formulated this great sermon the Greek philosophers has already come and gone and they contributed to the mankind but those teachings did not avail much and did not challenge people there was a vacuum there was incompleteness in all those philosophical ideas what actually man needed in this world is the true peace where he can be liberated from all the clutches of this world i request your kind attention to the reading of this passage matthew gospel chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 and seeing the multitude he went up on a mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him then he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Let's pass for a moment and think what the Lord Jesus Christ uttered in the opening of the sermon on the mount. He called blessed are the poor in spirit. In another words, he is is saying happy are those who are poor in spirit. What is happiness? How do you define happiness? What is the definition that Lord Jesus Christ gave about happiness? But in our modern idea of happiness is a diluted version of the joy implied by the term Jesus used. A wide of happiness is the independence of circumstances. If everything goes well, we are happy. If things that doesn't come on our way, we are upset. God's happiness or joy is dependent on the assurance of God's blessing. Sometimes it is present, often it is future. not on current circumstances and it abides deep and it is undisturbable within the believer today people in the world are not exempted from the grief and the sorrow and pain of this wretched world and every people in one way or the other they're looking for the true peace and happiness here comes the lord jesus christ and assures you a true peace if you only focus your attention and listen what the lord jesus christ says and put that into practice you will be liberated from all the clutches and all the griefs that is taunting over your life is there a hope for mankind certainly there is a hope in christ jesus the lord jesus christ calls those blessed who are poor in spirit what he means by that he means the humble and the lowly minded and self abased he means those who are deeply convinced of their own sinfulness in god's sight those who are not rich those who are not increased with the goods of this world they do not fancy they need nothing they regard themselves as wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked in reality there is a question can a mankind live to the standard that jesus expects can we really humble can we really low ourselves can we really see our wretchedness in us so that we can experience the true peace of god is it really possible you know the lord jesus christ gave a complete code of conduct for a whole desire to please god there are many people today consider that this laws are to be impractical but the lord's commandment are always accompanied by his enabling power the wonderful example we find in the book of romans chapter 7 verses 25 i mean 24 paul says who wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body of death i thank god through lord jesus christ our god so then with my mind i myself serve the law of god but with the flesh the law of sin and then he comes down and he says in chapter 8 verses 2 i thank god for the law of the spirit of christ has made me free from the law of sin and death he discovered something that the power of christ was able to deliver him from the wretchedness deliver him from the sinfulness so that he can uh, he can be a man what god expects thereby he can experience the perfect peace and the joy 
of the almighty god we find another beautiful example of isaiah in the book of isaiah chapter 5 verses 8 to 23 we see that isaiah had a great passion for his people and he was crying out woe unto them woe unto them woe unto them and when he found himself in the presence of the lord when he encountered the almighty holy god he began to cry out woe is me you know the sense of god's presence deals intensely with a hearty spirit that is so much admired by the world so the first demand the lord jesus christ expects in order to experience a perfect peace is a genuine humility if believers do not have such changed nature the malignant evil of the present social order would simply be reproduced in god's kingdom so on the threshold of the sermon of the mount the lord placed a gate of humility you may wonder why you know the sermon seems to have been uh, delivered on the slopes above the capernaum and there were enormous people a multitudes were attracted to jesus by his miracles and they followed him to the mountain side and people were stunned and shocked when jesus laid a kind of kingdom and this thought was something strange that had never entered their wildest dream this may sound strange but this is the reality this is the utterance of the chief shepherd as we imply this teaching to our lives and as we humble and as we seek god and depend on god we will definitely see the breakthrough in our life we will experience a perfect peace which the world cannot offer there is hope there is joy there is perfect peace in christ jesus as we humble ourselves and walk like him and be like him he is the forerunner of our race in this world may god richly bless us amen